Hello everyone and welcome to today's lesson. I think you are going to enjoy this one because we are going to have more calculations and we will also be drawing graph. In a grade 11, if a grade 11 learner was saving 200 every month to prepare for their metric farewell next year, their savings can be represented on a linear graph to show the relationship and a pattern. The 200 they save will be represented as a constant value on the graph. This is what today's lesson is going to focus on, relationships and graphs. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to construct a table from an equation, a formula or a given scenario, determine and extend the pattern on a table, Use the values in a table to draw graphs. Read values from the graphs. Okay, let's look at our lesson and how we have divided the topic for today. The topic is relationships and graphs. We have divided it into four sections and we are going to look at the constant fixed graphs, the constant different graphs, the linear graph and the inverse graph. What you should know is that you must be able to work with graphs that tell a story, identify and describe the relationship between two or more variables, construct or derive a formula from tables or scenarios, use information presented on a table to draw a graph, and let's look at our first activity just to remind ourselves about this topic. The table below shows the relationship between the number of hours that Letu works at a restaurant and her daily earnings. The first thing that we have is a table over there, and of course we know that from a table we get dependent and independent variables, and from a table we always get missing values. Already we have missing value A and missing value B. The first question says, identify the independent variable. Our independent variable is always located at the top part of the table. Therefore, in this case, our independent variable will be represented by the time worked in hours. Derive a formula to calculate Letu's daily earnings. Now let's look at the table. What can we see? We can tell that from the graph, Letu, even before she can even start working, she is already earning 150. And for the first hour that she shall have worked, the daily earning will now be 200 rands. What can we notice? It has increased from 150 to 200. And then, what does this mean? It means there is a fixed cost from the given scenario. So the formula that we would use over there to calculate daily earnings, we can just say it will be 150 plus 50 rands multiplied by N. Our N in this case will be represented by the number of hours. Calculate the missing value A and missing value B from the table. We know that for us to calculate the values from the table, we will then have to use the formula, the one that we've just constructed in the previous question. So let's just bring this question here so that it becomes easier for us to substitute. Remember we said daily earnings, so we can just say earnings will be equals to a fixed cost of 150 plus a variable cost of 50 rand multiplied by N, where N represents the number of hours. Now let's substitute. Because we are looking for A, we need to use that value over there. Then we then say 150 plus 50 rands multiplied by 2. And this will give us what? I'm going to write the answer there. Let's calculate. We then say 150 plus 50 rands multiplied by 2. We then get the value of A. 
Remember, our earnings in this case are represented by A. Therefore, the amount there, it will be 250. We'll use the same formula to calculate the value of B, and we then say B will be equal to 150 plus 50 rands multiplied by, don't forget that we need to use that value over there, which is now five hours. Then we use our calculators. Help me calculate this one, guys. We'll then say 150 plus 50 rands multiplied by five. And I'm sure you got the same answer as mine, which is 400 rands. Let's carry on. Uh, represent the values or in the table on the graph. Let's look at the given graph over there. What can we tell? The graph starts at zero, and when x is zero over there, that is the point b is 150. That is the point over there. When x is one, we are told that y is 200. So you can see that the values over there, they need to tally. When x is 250, remember we calculated 250 in the previous question, which was the value of a. So that's how our uh, graph will look moving forward. It will be an increasing graph. The new ways that we are going to learn in this section are discrete variables, which are values that are only whole numbers. Values like 2, 3, 5, 8, and 10. We have continuous variables, which are values that are fractions or decimals. They include 1 over 2, 0, 0,5, and 0, 0,42. Of course, there are many others. And then we have ordered pair, which will be two numbers written in a particular order so that they give the location of a point on a grid. Values like 0 and 0, 1 and 95, 2 and 190. Coordinates refer to a number in an ordered pair. The first coordinate shows the position along the horizontal axis, and the second coordinate shows the position up the vertical axis. Now, let's look at our first section that we are going to cover. Don't forget to bring your calculators, write in pairs, so that we can calculate together. The first one that we are looking at is the constant or the fixed graph. The constant or a, a, the graph of a constant relationship will always be a straight line which is parallel to the horizontal axis, which are our x-axis, at the point of the dependent variable. Here is an example. A painter charges 6,000 for a painting job, irrespective of the number of days he works. So whether it's more days or few days, at the end of the day, the painter must get 6,000 rent. The graph below indicates the relationship. Let's look at the graph, guys. Remember we said the painter charges 6,000 rent. It doesn't matter whether they will take more days or few days. At the end of the day, must be paid 6,000 rent. So this is how we will uh, represent the graph. If the painter takes one day, the painter at the end of the day still expects to be paid 6,000 rent. Whether the painter takes seven days at the end of the day, the painter still expects to be paid 6,000 rent. So you can, when you look at the graph, there's that fixed or a flat, which is a constant amount. The pattern that we see on the graph is that it becomes flat. So we can then say it is a constant fixed. Common mistakes that normally happens when we work with these types of questions is that you tend to swap the dependent and independent variables when representing a constant relationship on a graph. Here is an advice. Remember your independent variable will always be the top part of your table which is the x-axis. And your dependent variable will be at the bottom of your table, which then becomes your y-axis. Here is an example for us. Nikiwe would like to take her child 
to swim at Aqua Dome Resort for a day. The resort charges visitors 90 rands per day, per person, and this is up to the maximum of seven hours a day. So the charge is for the day. Identify the type of a relationship given above. What can we say here? We can tell that there is that constant relationship. Whether they stay long, up to seven hours, or they stay fewer hours, less than seven hours, at the end of the day, they are expected to pay 90 rands per person. Determine the formula to represent the cost of taking a child to Aquadome. We know that cost is equals to 90 rands. It is not depending on the number of hours they will spend there. However, it is cost for seven hours in a day. How much will Nikiwe pay if a child swam for seven hours? Let's go back to the given statement. They said the resort charges visitors 90 rands per day, per person and up to the maximum of seven hours. So Nikiwe and her, and her child, they will still be within the seven hours. So they will still pay 90 rand for Nikiwe's child. What is the maximum number of hours that Nikiwe's child can swim for? Remember again from the given statement. So it is very important to give yourself time and analyze the given statement when we're working with such questions, especially with our subjects. So we know it is given there, uh, the maximum hours will be seven hours. Use the table alongside to draw the graph of different cost per hour. So there is our table. From the table we know we have the x-axis, which represents the independent variable. We have the y-axis, which represents the uh, dependent variable. So now let's see the relationship between the table and the graph. The values of the x-axis on the graph will always be represented there and your y values will always be there. So that is the relationship between the table or the values from the table and the, the graph. So what do we know? We know that for the maximum of seven hours, Nikio will pay 90 rands. So our graph will be the, it will be a constant graph there. The graph will look in that uh, fashion. Let's go for an ad break and we'll come back with more activities and drink some water, bring some energy so that we can do more graphs with calculations. I will see you after this. <laughs> 